Yes, that's snow. It's kind of officially winter now, as there's snow on the ground. And it's day 65 of the camper pod build. I have a lot of it cleared out in here now, except for my apron, a couple of pieces of uh, uh, returns there, and a few little, a couple odds and ends, but it's mostly cleared out. Well, I guess there's still a lot of stuff in here, even the brake. But anyway, what I'm going to be starting today is this stuff, the electrical. Over the past several months of this build, I've been buying wire, buying bits and pieces here and there for the build. And we've sort of mapped out a plan of what we're going to do inside here. We're not going to have massive amounts of electrical everywhere. And by electrical, I mean both AC and DC. We're going, we've got, the, uh, got that equipment from Nylite over here that we'll be installing the lights and the, the uh, DC outlets and that sort of stuff. This is going into the camper. I've uh, taken a look at a, quite a few capacity charts for uh, gauging of wires and that sort of stuff and spoke to, uh, spoke to a couple of friends who, who dabble with this stuff and determine what I need for the camper in here. And again, we're not gonna be running any yeah, heavy duty appliances. We're getting low wattage and all that sort of stuff. And we've been playing with different ideas for the power source. We were at getting a power box to going inverter battery, back to a power box, back to an inverter battery. We've been playing with a few different things. So that's still up in the air, but it's everything is gonna be running back to this section down here. Push those up out of the way. All the electric, this is where it's all gonna be housed without whatever the power source is. So everything is gonna, the wires are gonna be running back to there. Fuse panel is gonna be like right here somewhere. That cool um, switch box, we're gonna put it right here and other stuff throughout the camper. Yeah, so it's sort of a bit of a ramble for an opening, but uh, so that's what I'm gonna be at today. It's a little cool in here. I've got my little heater there running inside the camper, which keeps it kind of toasty inside the camper while it's cool out in the garage. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I guess as would always, I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm going along. I broke out a couple of different tools here in order to get the right size hole for this 12 volt DC. Started off with my hole saws, didn't quite have one large enough. Well, it was, it was on the verge of too large in order to catch this, this ring that goes on the, on the back of the DC plug. I tried my one inch spade bit because it's about one inch, but then it didn't account for the threads. So had to go to good old fashioned Forstner. It drilled a hole, perfect size for, for this. So I just got to shorten this a little bit now. It doesn't need to be this long. And then uh, put pop, uh, pop another uh, pocket hole in it pocket, uh, for the screw and then put it in place. There we go, just lining up that there so I can Pop in a couple of pocket screws. Okay. Put this piece in here. There we go. So that'll pop in there, it'll screw on, plenty of room back here. Now the one we're going to put up here is a dual USB and 12 volt. So it's going to require probably two holes and a little bit bigger block of wood. I already used this one for something else, so it already has pocket holes on one side. So that can go there. I just got to drill, drill two holes for it and then put a couple of or at least one pocket screw up in that direction. 
here's a second one. Now there's going to be a, a three millimeter or quarter of an inch um, foam light going over this here. So I still got enough room in the back. So that'll be a nice secure point there. And I've got, oh, easily well over a half an inch back here. So that is a perfect, there's enough room there for, for the wires as well. The electrical box is going right here. I just put a little bit more bracing for this. So it can, let's see if I can do this right here. I got a little bit of wiggle room just in case we want to move it back or forth. And I've got it accommodated for the foam light that's going on the outside. So whenever we run the wire, I can screw this in place and we're good to go. And we're at the final stud in place. That's about all the extra bracketing I have to put in for the electrics. It's time to look at running some wires. After a little bit of sizing up, I kind of figure what I'm going to do with the wires. This line right here, that's going to be the line of the um, roof. That's where the roof is going to come. That, that'll be flush with this. This is a little lower or sorry, higher. And it's to be flush with this sort of thing. So that that's that's the roof level. So I'm going to run the wires between the say ceiling and the insulation. So I'm going to have to pop a hole in there for the lights out here in the wet room, that we call it. And running here, I actually have my router chucked up with a quarter inch straight bit with a quarter inch depth. So I'm just going to go like zip right there so that I can tuck the wires up there because there's going to be one light here and one light there and pretty much the same for in here as well. I'm going to have to go through this here with say, I'm going to probably use a quarter inch, quarter inch bit here and here shouldn't impact the router, uh, the, the roof, uh, the rafter as much because it's only going to be a quarter of an inch and I'm not sure if my wife wants lights on this side or on this side of the rafter. So I have to check with that, check on that. And up here, these two lights are going on a separate circuit as well. So they'll probably come out here. Or I might, I might work them in here. That might be an option. And then come over. Hmm, that might be an option. Now that I've got all the holes drilled and the grooves in the, in the rafters to run the wires, I broke out the coils. I've got uh, 100 feet here. I'm using 18 gauge. Got 100 feet of black, 100 feet of red. I'm gonna set it up and start pulling it. Growing up the son of an electrician, I picked up a thing or two along the way. Pulling wires, you know, in houses, in hot temperatures, humid temperatures, cold temperatures. I did it all. I did pick up a few things, including this. <clears throat> now, back in the day when using, you know, household electrical wire, this would have been usually replaced by, um, let's say, uh, the broom handle for mom's broom. We'd take it, she'd wonder where it went. That's what we did. We put the big coils and we'd screw it onto a couple of studs. I don't have to screw this to studs. I just got a couple of clamps. But this will help immensely in uh, in pulling out the wire and you know give me an an easy way to wire the camper instead of just having the spools dance around on the floor and get all tangled up and that sort of stuff.
I bought this package of 400 assorted piece terminal kit, I don't know, a long while ago. And I figured that whatever I would need, I would have it in here. Unfortunately, I don't. Because I'm using, using mostly 18 gauge, which is red. Red. 12 gauge, which is yellow. It's a fair amount of yellow here. And 8 gauge. I'm not quite sure what this, what H gauge is. The blue gauge, there's our blue stuff is usually 16 to 14. So I've got a lot of yellow, very little red. So I did a, a list of things that I think I need to pull all this together. So I'm probably going to have to go to an electronics store to get this. Because if I go to like Princess Auto, they'll have most, if not all of it. But it'll be in bags of, what, 20, 25? It'll be well, like these. These tap-ins. 25 pieces. Now I'm going to need 16. Um, tap-ins. 16. I'm going to go to an electronics store. Because they might have, them, might have them a bit cheaper. I forget what I pay for those. It wasn't a lot, but they might have them for cheaper. Plus, they I'm hoping they'd be able to sell them by the each. So I can get what I need. And maybe a couple of extra. Because there's always... You know, things can go wrong. Yeah, so that's it. So this that'll be a trip uh, my next day out to go and pick up this stuff right here. That's it for day 65. I'll do a quick recap. I popped in this reinforcement for my 12 volt. This here for my 120. Up here. Did the same thing. This is a dual uh, USB and 12 volt. And this is where the other plug is gonna go, 120. Also ran some wires. I got three circuits here. I got this circuit right here, everywhere you see the green tape. That's roughly where a light's gonna go. I'm gonna be tapping into that. So that here is for, we'll call it the wet room. This circuit here goes along and it's for the kitchen. Gonna have two lights here over the counter. And this one right here, if you want to follow that, that'll bring you along. It'll be over the, say, the bed area, as well as here and here. So the lights are going to be here, so they'll tap into that. I still have to clean up here. i got to vacuum up because it's a little bit messy. So I'll do that in a minute. And I'll turn off that flashing light. There we go. Okay, so that's the first part of the electrical done. Not quite sure what's going to be next. Might have to do some uh, switch gears and get into putting some of the exterior cladding up because some of the wires are going to have to go through the cladding in order for me to place them. So it doesn't make much sense for me to put them in place now and then have to remove them to put in the cladding. So that's probably what I'm gonna do next. But I'm gonna to have to think about it. Might be a surprise. Anyway, that's it, day 65. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.